So hello friends, once again welcome back in our video series of C programming by TechBooster. So friends here in this video we will learn about multidimensional arrays. In our previous video we have learned what is single dimensional array that is in case of a single dimensional array you will be having only one row and here in this video we will learn about your multidimensional array and first of all we will start with your 2D array. So you can see this is a 2D array. So here whenever I talk about your 2D array, here in this case you will be having multiple rows and multiple columns. So this is our example. You can see here in this case I am having 3 rows and 4 columns. So these are my rows, I am having 3 rows and these are my columns. So I am having 4 columns. So this is an example of your 2D array. So here in this video we will learn how to create this 2D array and how to work with it. So before creating this 2D array, we need to know the syntax how to create it. So this is our syntax. First of all, we need to consider the data type and then the name of your array and then we need to consider number of rows in a square bracket. Then again, we need to consider another square bracket and we need to consider number of columns within it. So this is our syntax and as I told you in my previous video, your data type is very important like the data type that you will be considering here your particular array will be able to store that particular type of data only if you consider your data type to be int your array will be able to store integer values only and then you can see if you want to store your values or elements manually in that case you can directly start with your curly bracket as we have seen in our previous video so here you can directly use the curly bracket and then you can consider all your elements like here in this case as I have 3 rows and 4 columns so overall I will be having 12 elements if you multiply your number of rows and number of columns that will give you number of elements so you can directly write all your elements within a single curly bracket and your program will automatically detect your first row, second row and third row let me show you that one let me open my code block Okay, so this is my code block and here I have already created a new file and I have named it as array2d. So first of all, we will start with our header file include stdio.h. Now we will be having our main function. Now here in this case, I will consider int and let the name of my array be a. And here let me consider your three rows and four columns. So basically what I will do, so I will be having 12 elements, so I can directly write 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So these are my 12 elements. Now directly if you want to print all your 12 elements, here in this case I will start with my for loop. So first of all I will start with for int i equals to 0 so this will be my number of rows so comma i less than 3 here in this case as i have 3 rows so i am considering i less than 3 and then i plus plus then within this for loop we will have another for loop that will be for your number of coulombs that is your nested for loop so again i will consider for int j equals to 0 j less than 4 j plus plus now here I'll directly use my print statement print f percentage d space and then comma a i and then j okay so I'm done so here after this j loop i'll just print a new line that is a slash n so what am i doing here i'll explain you let me again write return zero so here basically what i'm doing i'm starting with my i as zero so my for my first loop my value of i will be zero and then as your i is less than three so we will enter within this loop and then here we have another loop where we are starting with our value of j. So our initial value of j is also 0 and our 0 is less than 4. So we will enter this particular loop and here we will print a 
0 0 and your a 0 0 is nothing but your first element then again we will increment our value of j this will be your 1 then this will be your a 0 1 this will be your second element and this will continue till the value of j is equals to 3 then again once your j is done we will increment the value of i your i will be 1 then here again we will continue with our j so here this will be your 1 0 1 1 1 2 and 1 3 then again we will continue with our i because your i now is 2 and 2 is less than 3 so again we will enter into our j this will be your 2 0 2 1 2 2 and 2 3 finally here we will come out of our j and i loop and here by using this slash n after each and every row you will have a new line so once you click on this build and run you can see this is your matrix 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 so here in this case just by considering a single curly bracket here I am having three different rows so here my program is automatically calculating that is in my first row I have four elements in my second row I have uh, four elements and in my third row I have four elements but this may be a little bit confusing for you like how many elements I'll be having in my first row then in second row so in order to make this thing more clear what you can do or what I'll suggest you is to use another curly bracket here so this is my another curly bracket and I'll end it here because this is my first row then I'll have a comma and then I'll start with another curly bracket because this is my second row and in my second row I will have elements till 8 so here I will stop this curly bracket and then after this comma I can have another curly bracket and at the end I will stop this one because this is my third row now if you run your program you will have the similar output you can see your output is similar but this is more distinct and more clear so in your coming case I will suggest you to use this particular syntax so I hope now you are clear with how to create a two-dimensional matrix now let us move back towards our slide and check out what we have next so this is our syntax now here I have considered an example like if you want to create an array of size 2 comma 3 so this will be the way how you need to write if you want to enter your elements manually and this will be your output as we have seen in our program so from here if you want to access any particular element like here in this case if you want to access this particular 12 in that case this will be your format like you need to consider the name of your array and then your row position and coulomb position so here if I talk about my position this is my 0 0 this is my 0 1 and this is my 0 2 this is my 1 0 1 1 and 1 2 so here the position of 12 is your 0 1 so this will give you 12 similarly if you want to access 15 so here your position is 1 2 so you need to consider your uh, row position as 1 and your column position as 2 considering that particular array and you will have your output so this is the way how you can select any element from your array now let us try to implement our 2d array practically like here in this case I have considered a practice, uh, practice set for you here I have asked you to create a 2D array and enter roll number of 6 students from 101 to 106 in first row and enter their mark in particular subject of a particular subject in second row. That is here in your first row you will have all the roll numbers and in your second row you will have their respective mark for a particular subject. So our roll number can be generated automatically by incrementing the value. But here if I talk about the mark, we will consider user input, we will allow our user to enter mark for each and every student with a specific roll number. So how to do this one? So for this, I will again open my code block. So this is my code block and here I will just modify this particular program. So I will just clear these values. I am done. So now we can start with our practice set. So here first of all I will consider an array. So this will be a type integer and here I will have two rows and 
six columns okay so here I have two rows in my first row I will store all the row numbers and in my second row I will store their respective marks so here as I told you uh, my roll number will start from 101 to 106 so I can just increment my values so here what I will do I will just consider uh, a variable m and I will initialize it value with 101 so now again I will consider i equals to 0 so here i is nothing but my row so here my first row is 0 here I will start with my for loop now so in my for loop I have another variable j which I am starting from 0 then j less than 6 and j plus plus okay so I am done now here what I need to do I need to store all the roll numbers so basically what I will do my roll numbers will be stored automatically so here this will be your a i j so a i j is nothing but your m so here first of all your value of i is j which is fixed and here once you are into your loop your j is starting from 0 so first value that will be storing here is a 0 0 which is nothing but your 1 0 1 so once we are done I will increment my value of m here now in my second loop my value of j will be 1 so here this will be your a 0 1 which will be your 1 0 2 and this will continue till your value of j is 5 so once we are done we will store our roll numbers from 1 0 1 to 1 0 6 in our first row that is your row 0 now once done here I will come out of my loop and I will increment my row value so now as I've incremented i so this will be your 1 now your value of i is 1 and here in my second row what I am doing I am allowing my users to enter the respective mark so again I will start with my loop int j equals to 0 j less than 6 j plus plus j plus plus okay so here now I'll just print a message print F enter uh, the mark of let me consider science C I E N science enter the mark of science for roll number so here my first roll number will be 101 so let me just use percentage D here and there in place of my percentage d what i want to print is 101 and 101 will be your nothing but a this will be your zero that is your first row and j so this will print your um, 101 when your j is zero when your j is one this will print 102 and this will continue till 106 so once we are done now here i will use scan so that we can consider our input value so this is my percentage D and then a space comma then my address operator and here in this case I will have my um, array A with I and then J okay so I am done so this will allow me to store the mark of signs for all roll numbers from 101 to 106 now once we are done we need to print our mat uh, matrix or you can say array as this is a two dimension so we can also call it as matrix for what I'll do I'll use int i equals to 0 i less than 2 i plus plus then here again we need to consider for int j equals to 0 j less than 2 j less than 6 and then j plus plus okay so we are done now here we just need to print the matrix so what i'll do print f percentage d space then again here a i j okay so we are we are done now after my first row i need to have new lines so I will use a slash n so guys we are done now now you can directly 
run this particular program and once you run okay i need to use a semicolon here semicolon. now once we run this particular program here we'll get an input message where we'll allow our users to enter the mark of signs for roll number 101 so let me enter it as 69 now we have another input message where we are allowing to enter mark for roll number 102 let it be your 89 then 85 45 65 and now finally for roll number 106 let it be your 90 now once you press enter you can see this is your matrix where in your first row you have all your roll numbers from 101 to 106 and in your second row you have their respective mark for signs so guys this is the way how you can create any of your 2d array so i hope now you are clear with how to create any of your 2d arrays now let's move back towards our slide and check out how to create any of your 3d arrays although in maximum cases you won't be using this 3d array on regular basis but who knows in coming time you may have to use either 3d or 4d or 5d array so here i'll just show you how to create any of your 3d array and this is your syntax so here we'll start with our data type again then name of our array and then here first of all we'll specify number of matrices like whenever we talk about our uh, single array or 2d array or 3d array basically we have our number of axes whenever we consider 2d array we can consider it as two axes that is your x and y and when we talk about our 3d array basically here we'll be having another axis that is your z now here my first uh, parameter will define number of matrices like how many matrices you want to create your second parameter that you'll be having within this square bracket that will define your number of rows and third one will define number of columns so this is your syntax and now if i consider an example here you can see this is my example here first of all i'm considering two matrices here i'll be creating two matrices and i have three rows and three columns in each matrices and this is the way how you can manually input your elements so let me show you this one by opening my code block and here in this case I'll just create a new file and I'll try to save it I'll save it by the name array underscore 3 D okay so now we'll be starting with our header file include sgtio.h then we'll have our main function now here first of all i'll show you how to consider your elements manually so let me consider again my array as a here i will have two two defines my number of matrices i will be having two matrices and let me consider three rows and three columns okay so this is my syntax so this will allow me to create my array a that is your 3d array now in order to enter your elements manually i'll use a equal sign here and then i'll be using this curly bracket and within this curly bracket i'll use another curly bracket so this curly bracket is for my first matrix and here within my first matrix as i have three rows and three columns so i'll use another curly bracket and let me use my element as one comma two comma three so this is my first row of my first matrix then i'll use curly bracket again and then here i'll use comma my second row let it be four comma five comma six then again comma and then again another curly bracket with um, let it be 7 comma 8 comma 9 okay so this is my first matrix so here I'll use this curly bracket which will define that my first matrix is done now I'll use another comma here I'll use another curly bracket and within this curly bracket I'll consider my first row 
10 11 12 okay done comma second row 13 14 15 then third uh, row that is your 16 comma 17 comma 18 okay i am done so this will define my second matrix and finally i will close this one so i am done with this one now here i need to print my matrix so in order to print again we need to consider our loop so i'll start with three parameters now my three parameter will be like let me consider int i comma j comma k so here i is my number of matrix j is my number of rows and k is my number of columns so first of all we'll be having i equals to zero i less than two i plus plus okay so here we'll be having my j loop j equals to zero j less than three j plus plus so again we'll be having here our k loop k equals to zero k less than three k plus plus okay so now here we'll just print our um, i j and k so i'll just use print f percentage d with a space and then comma a i j and then k okay so i'm done now you need to decide where are you going to create new line so after each and every column you need to have a new line so just after this i'll use print f slash n then once you are done so this will allow you to create your first matrix then once you're done with the first matrix again i will use a new line to define my second matrix so print f this will be my second matrix okay so i'm done now here finally i will have return zero and once you are done you can run this particular program and once you run okay i haven't used semicolon here so once you run this one okay you can see this is my first matrix 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and this is my second matrix 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 so guys this is the way how you can create your 3d array and i hope now you are clear with how to create your 3d array here i have just considered all the elements manually but you can consider any value just in that case you need to have another loop and your loop will help you to increment your value or to consider any value from your user so guys with this i will be winding this video here i hope your 2d array and 3d array is clear and now it's your turn you need to practice and once you are done you can move back towards our next slide so guys take care bye bye